everyone, data scientist Luna here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I talk about how to become a data scientist or grow data science career. If you are coming back, you probably noticed I gained lots of weight. Yes, I'm nine months pregnant and my baby Bowie will be here in one month. Put that aside. Today, I'm going to talk about the five mistakes that I made when I was first job hunting for a data scientist job after my master's program. I think these are the reasons why my response rate, response rate meaning getting the interview rate was very low. Overall, my response rate was somewhere between 1% to maybe 5%. However, in the beginning of the job search, I really wasn't getting many interviews. I apply 100 jobs, I get maybe one interview out of it. And I had to learn this lessons hard way. Um, so I'm sharing this to you right now so you don't have to go through these mistakes and hopefully have a better response rate than I did. The first two mistakes are very connected to each other, so I will talk about them together. The first one is I was using a generic resume. And the reason I was using a generic resume is, I mean, obviously I thought that's okay because I'm only applying for data scientist role and I thought they were all similar. The other reason was because I didn't have any specific domain or industry that I was really interested in. For me, it was more about just find a company that would sponsor my H1B. As an international student, that was something that I wanted to make sure. As long as the company will sponsor my H1B, I'm okay. So I was applying for any industry. But then now that I think about it, I think that's one of the reasons why my response rate was so low. Because when you look at my resume, it's just like a generic data science resume with statistics bachelors and statistics masters. However, there was no focus. There was no, I want to be a data scientist in retail or healthcare. I didn't have any interest. My projects were just random projects that I did at school. And it wasn't showing a specific interest. <laughs> when you think about it, if you are hiring a data scientist in healthcare and you see no project relevant to healthcare, that resume is probably going to get drawn out. They are not going to think that this person has interest in healthcare when there's no project related to healthcare whatsoever. Having this domain or pick a couple of industry might help you get a better response rate, might help you get more interviews. And I'm saying this now because I actually have observed that from my friends. If you worked in certain industry, then you have some domain knowledge and that will help you become a data scientist in that field. Third reason was I wasn't really doing much of a network. Everyone talk about networking is so important. You have to get advice and referral. I guess I did know the importance of it, but I was shy and I just didn't feel comfortable reaching out to people. But whenever I got to a point where I really wasn't getting interview, I was reaching out to people. I was cold messaging people, asking for advice, asking for referral. It's uncomfortable and not many people respond. However, people who respond, they actually give you good advice or sometimes if you had a good conversation with them, you can even ask them for a resume feedback. And I'm telling you that makes a difference. When in the beginning, I wasn't networking, I didn't know what was wrong with my resume or my strategy for interview prep. However, by talking to these people who are already in industry, I learned the problem of my resume. Some people were kind enough to, to give me resume feedback. Some people referred me to their company. Networking will really make a difference. The fourth mistake I was making was 
I didn't have a portfolio and I don't remember exactly why I didn't have portfolio. I just never made it and then went with it. However, if I were to go back and do the job hunting again, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a really nice portfolio where I will talk about my data science project and link my GitHub account so people can actually see the code. Nowadays, it's becoming more known. A lot of students, even working professionals, sometimes have portfolio. And that's the best way to show your technical skills. So have a portfolio. It, for the recruiters, for the hiring managers, it just goes without saying. Having a portfolio will help you. Then the last mistake I was making was I didn't really have much uh, online presence, meaning I was using LinkedIn to apply for jobs. However, I wasn't really writing anything on LinkedIn. There's a medium towards data science. Those resources, they give you information, so it helps in that way. But also you can write on them. You can write about the data science project you just completed on Medium. While you're writing on Medium, you have to think about why you did this project, what kind of steps you took, and what you learned from it. And you have to write that in plain English. And that is the way to show your soft skills. Data scientists, I talked about it in other videos too. Technical skills are important, everyone has them, but what makes the difference between good and bad data scientists, in my opinion, is the soft skills. If someone has a really easy to understand article about their data science project they've done on Medium, that will give the hiring manager are really good signs that this person is worth interviewing. So I would really recommend you to start writing on Medium or write a post on LinkedIn to show that you are actively engaging in this data science community. And that will help you increase your profile views or connection requests. You can actually reach out to them and then build your network through it. Even though you're a student, you still can do it. And I really encourage you to do that. These are the five mistakes that I made. I will wrap it up. The first mistake was I was using generic resume. Second mistake, I didn't have any specific domain that I was interested in or that was showing on my resume. Third was I wasn't networking enough. I wasn't asking people for advice and stuff. And that kind of slowed me down. Fourth was not having the portfolio. Fifth was not having any online presence, not engaging in LinkedIn or Medium, things like that. If you avoid these five mistakes, I believe you will have a better chance of getting interviews and I hope this video helps you. Thank you.